All right. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Sam Tweeten, and I'm giving a little presentation today on aldurazyme. Uh, so let's just dive right in here. Uh, a quick table of contents here. We're just going to go over an introduction of the product quick. Then we're going to talk a little bit about the history of the product and where it came from. And then we're going to talk exactly what the product does and what the disease uh, that it treated, uh, what it's like to have that disease and uh, the details of it. And then we'll talk about some ethical dilemmas that come with the use of this product. Uh, and then finally, we're just going to have a little conclusion and overview of what we uh, went through. So let's just dive right in here. Um, so all the uh, all the stuff I got from the Aldurazyme website, the website of Biomarin, who produces the product, uh, the FDA, uh, places like that. So this is from the Aldurazyme website. Uh, and it says, Aldurazyme uh, is indicated for patients with the hurler and hurler shy forms of mucopolysaccharidosis 1, and we're just going to call it MPS1 from now on, and for patients with the shy form who have moderate to severe symptoms. The risks and benefits of treating mildly affected patients with the shy form have not been established. And then also the site says, Aldurazyme has been shown to improve the pulmonary function and walking capacity uh, of the patients. And Aldurazyme has been evaluated for effects on the central nervous system uh, manifestation. Has not been evaluated for the effects of the central nervous system manifestations of this of the disorder. Uh, so a little bit of background around the company. Uh, it's produced or it's made by uh, manufactured by Biomarin, and then it's commercialized by Genzyme. And there really isn't any uh, competition for the product at this point, uh, and we'll get to that in just a second. But uh, so yep, yeah, it's manufactured by Biomarin, commercialized by Genzyme uh, in the United States and around the world. Uh, Biomarin is a company that develops and commercializes uh, biopharmaceuticals for various diseases and medical conditions. They focus on rare genetic diseases and have commercialized five products since 1997. They're operating in over 40 countries and have over 1,300 employees worldwide. Um, and they have various other products uh, they uh, make for different uh, rare diseases and whatnot. Uh, and then, so Genzyme then commercializes the product. And then from the Genzyme website, I have a couple quotes here, and it says, Genzyme has pioneered... Uh, the development and delivery of transformative therapies for over 30 years. Founded in 1981 in Boston, Massachusetts, Genzyme evolved from a tiny startup with just a handful of employees to one of the world's largest, world's leading biotech, biotech companies. Acquired by Sanofi in uh, 2011, Genzyme now benefits uh, from the reach and resources of one of the world's largest pharmaceutical companies with a shared commitment to improving the lives of patients. And then also from the website, it says, Genzyme has long been known for our expertise in the class of rare genetic diseases known as lysosomal storage disorders. And those uh, LSDs uh, is exactly what uh, the disease that uh, aldurazyme deals with. That's exactly uh, the umbrella that it falls under. So here on the, the slide, you can see I have a quick little uh, chart of the products that Genzyme commercializes. Um, it's in different categories. Under the genetic diseases categories, you can see aldurazyme uh, is there. And then I know there's also some other products uh, that other people are doing their presentations on that Genzyme deals with also. Uh, Thyrogen is one that just comes to mind right now. I can see right there. Um, so this pro this company kind of is involved in a lot of different areas. Um, and it seems that both are very corporately responsible companies, which definitely plays into uh, any sort of ethical dilemma that comes with uh, um, using these products. So a little bit of history of the product and, and where it is now. Um, from the Biomarin website, Aldurazyme received a marketing approval uh, I should say from, not rum, from the U.S. Uh, Food and Drug Administration in April of 2003. This made it the first specific therapy for the treatment of MPS-1. The drug was later made legal to sell in Europe in June 2003. The drug was granted an orphan drug status in 2003, which gave the company exclusivity to the drugs that drug's market for seven years in the United States and ten years in the European Union. So that was in 2003. So that means that about four years ago, they lost that exclusivity in the United States. And just last year, they lost it in the European Union. So uh, although we don't really see any competitors right now, uh, there can definitely be, we can definitely expect to see some competitors arise uh, in the future now that uh, it's kind of almost like a patent now that their patent has expired. Um, so really to understand exactly what Aldurazyme does, at first we have to understand exactly what it treats and, and understand the disease that it treats. Uh, so like I said before, uh, it treats MPS1, and this is uh, straight from uh, the website. It says MPS1 is an inherited lysosomal storage disorder caused by a deficiency of alpha L iduronidase, a lysosomal enzyme normally required for the breakdown of certain complex carbohydrates norm, known as GAGs. If the enzyme is not pre present in sufficient quantities, the normal breakdown of GAGs is incomplete or blocked. The cell is then unable to excrete the, carbon, the carbohydrate residues and accumulate in the lysosome of the cells. 
This accumulation disrupts the cell's normal function and gives rise to the clinical manifestations of the disease. Uh, so basically, there's a buildup of carbohydrates in the lysosomes, and the cells are bloated and enlarged, and they can't function normally, which is uh, then what results in disorder. Uh, there's three variations of the disorder. Uh, um, there's the Hurler syndrome, which is the most severe po uh, form of MPS. There's the Hurler shy syndrome, which is the intermediate form, and the shy syndrome, which is just the uh, it's the people who are diagnosed with this aren't quite as affected as those with the Hurler syndrome. It's kind of like three different levels: uh, shy being the lowest, Hurler being the uh, the most uh, prevalent. Uh, it's treated by palliative care and enzyme replacement theory therapy, and that's where uh, aldirazine comes uh, in. Uh, and we'll explain that a little bit later. Um, and then uh, I just have a list of the symptoms here. Some of them include short stature, a large head, coarse, coarse facial features, uh, trouble communicating, spinal cord compression, impaired vision, impaired hearing. So it kind of touches a lot of areas of uh, the patient's lives. Uh, and it's definitely something that's difficult to deal with. Just moving right on here. Uh, so really to understand, kind of going down the line to understand Aldurazyme, you have to understand MPS, but to understand MPS, you have to understand uh, enzymes. And running the Aldurazyme website, they do a good job um, explaining what enzymes are and what they do. So this is just a definition from the website. It says, an enzyme is a protein that starts up or triggers a biochemical reaction. These are just some of the things that enzymes do uh, on here that I have. They regulate body growth through life of organism, uh, convert food and nutrients into energy, and they break down and build substances, substances that are found in the body. Uh, and that third point is exactly... Uh, what the enzyme that people with MPS1 are lacking does breaks down those carbohydrates and lysosomes. Uh, um, and then aldurazyme uh, then attempts to replace that through enzyme replacement therapy. Uh, so this is how it works. Um, basically, aldurazyme is injected into the through an IV into your body, into your cells, uh, releases the... Uh, the enzyme into the into the cells, which then go to the lysosome and clear it out. And there's actually um, a really good visual of this um, on the Aldurazyme website or by my own website, which I have right here. So it's kind of small, so I apologize. But uh, so you can see the difference. This is a normal cell, and this is an untreated cell uh, for someone who has MPS1. Uh, so what Aldurazyme does is, and you can see right here, it's the lysosomes are bloated, so the cell can't function properly. Uh, so the enzyme is delivered through an IV, and uh, then the IV solution is designed to bind to the cell membrane of the cell, the receptors of the cell membrane. Um, and once then it binds to that cell membrane, then it can enter the cell. And when it enters the cell, then it knows that it needs to go to the lysosomes. So it goes over, as you can see, to the lysosomes, uh, binds to that, and releases the enzyme inside of there. And then that enzyme is what is needed to break down the carbohydrates that are stored in there. Uh, so that's basically what it does. It, you know, there's a lot. It's not just one, though, that's put in there. It's a bunch of them. So a bunch are infused in the IV, and then uh, they go in, as you can see, clear out all the extra carbohydrates, and then the cell returns to its normal shape and looks exactly the way it should versus the untreated cell. So we'll go back to our PowerPoint here and move on. Um, so it's basically three stages how the enzymes are made that they use uh, in this uh, product cell from the Aldurazyme website. Uh, it, the first step is growing the enzymes and it says, before en genetic engineering it was difficult to purify enough enzymes to treat even a single patient. Today, special cell production lines have been created for large-scale manufacturing. These cells are frozen in a cell bank or storage facility prior to use, and they provide the starter material for genetic engineering process. These most commonly used cell production lines in genetic engineering is the Chinese hamster ovary cell, uh, which we're going to call CHO cells, uh, to produce a certain enzyme. The gene for that enzyme is obtained from human DNA and inserted into the CHO cells, causing them to manufacture the enzyme. Uh, and then the next step is purifying the enzymes. And it says, because enzymes are protein, they're, if they're digested or swallowed, uh, they're di digested if they're swallowed, so you can't administer them orally, so you have to administer them through an IV. Uh, so it says to purify the, you have to purify the, the enzyme if you're going to put it through an IV in your bloodstream, basically. So it says to purify the enzyme, unwanted substances are first removed. 
Afterwards, the product is ready for formulation and transportation to a sterile area where it's put in its final packaging. And then the third uh, process is basically just filling the vials with the new uh, enzyme solution, and then it's taken uh, to the clinics where it's administered through an IV. Uh, so different areas of improvement that have been found with the use of this drug. Uh, it's basically been proven effective uh, in the, fun you know, basically slowing down how the disease degenerates the body and cells because uh, it's able to clear out the carbohydrates in some of those cells, some of those cells and so it helps patients with daily life with just basically functioning uh, it slows the physical uh, deformations that come with the disease. Um, and one thing that they really stress on the website is that it needs to be a regular habit for you to take this drug. You can't just take it once and you're cured. It's kind of, it's a therapy, so you have to do it over and over and your body has to get used to it. Um, so basically to prepare for it, you just have to understand what the risks are, exactly what your specific situation is, um, and move on from there. Uh, and then they basically, for the infusion process, they just put an IV right in your bloodstream and then the solution does the, does the rest. So it's really simple. You just let it drip into your bloodstream for three or four hours. Um, so as of the effectiveness of the drug, uh, I found a uh, study from the National Center for Biotechnology Information, so I figured that would be a pretty good resource for this class. Uh, so basically they had uh, 45 uh, patients that they tested. Some of them were given aldurazyme, some of them were given a placebo, and they measured the effects of, uh, you know, after a while, what the effects were on the patients and if they improved or whatnot. Um, and this is a quote straight from the end of the, uh, the test. It says, the current evidence demonstrates that, that aldurazyme is effective when compared to the placebo in the treatment of MPS1. This included trial was comprehensive, comprehensive and of good quality. Although there were few participants, this trial included all the key outcome measures we wish to look at and demonstrated that aldurazyme is effectacious in relation to reducing biochemical parameters and improved uh, function capacity as assessed by forced biocapacity in the six-minute walk test. Basically, they did a six-minute walk test, and those who were treated with uh, aldurazyme performed a lot better than those who weren't treated with it. Um, and they did a couple other just basic function things that they had the patients do, and the people who took aldurazyme versus the placebo always seemed to test higher. So that they were able to conclude that it does, it is a benefit. Um, so that's always a plus. Uh, and then finally, a couple ethical dilemmas. Um, we found that this product can be used with stem cell therapy, and I think we could go on and on about stem cell research and who, what people's opinions are on that. Uh, but anything that's paired with that obviously is going to be controversial because it supports stem cell research and therapy. Um, especially embryonic stem cell therapy is a hot topic that we've all learned about. Um, so that's just something to be aware of. And also, I personally, I thought the use of the CHO cells, the Chinese hamster ovary cells, um, to develop the enzymes, I just thought that was kind of weird um, that they were using hamster cells to produce a product that then we would inject into our body. And it kind of, it's, I mean, at face value, it kind of seems like a little bit too much tampering with God's creation, but uh, it's definitely something that I would have to research more to create a real opinion on. But those are just two things that I for sure thought might be some ethical issues uh, for people. Uh, so just a quick conclusion, uh, aldirazyme is an enzyme replacement therapy product uh, for people with MPS1. MPS1 is basically uh, where people lack a certain enzyme in their cells that normally break down carbohydrates in the lysosomes. Because they can't break down that car the carbohydr carbohydrates in the lysosomes, uh, the cells aren't able to function and perform their duties as efficiently as they could, and so people end up having physical deformities or they lack... Uh, they the function to be able to go about their daily lives. Um, the treatment process is it's administered through an IV uh, and it's proven successful in this one test that we found. So that's always a plus and it seems to me that uh, kind of the risk outweighs, the benefits outweigh always the risk and it's the lesser of two evils, I guess, versus doing nothing would be to take a product like this. There are some ethical issues involved but nothing that I think would ever derail this product and I th only really see it as a benefit to people with the disorder. I think I speak for everyone. I say I can't really even imagine what it would be like to have that. Um, so, yep, that's basically what the product is and what it does. Uh, I have a list of sources here. Um, and that's pretty much all design for you. So thank you for uh, listening. If anybody's still awake, I'm sure that maybe they enjoyed it. So thank you again.